everyone. It is Wednesday. Flyleaf talks about stuff. Another Flyleaf talks about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Where we I get to talk about all the things. My welcomings. We get to talk about all the things that we want to talk about. We do, and it's and just we, Kim and I. So okay. Stephanie, Kim. This is our uniform today. That's it. Since we're in the. Okay. I have to say, I have been wearing the Flyleaf shirts, the long sleeve one, because it's you know clearly fall and winter. Mm-hmm. Um, with. I'm not hiking boots, but combat boots, and I just love it. It's like my new uniform. And I just, I'm always comfortable. Yep. I rather used to be uncomfortable at work all day long. Love it. Love being comfortable. Yeah. So we had, a, I had a, this is a little side note, I had a conversation with somebody not too long ago about how we dress for work and, and expectations and dress for work. And um, one of the things that, that I love is that since we are now in charge of ourselves, yeah. Um, we don't dress terribly, but we dress comfortably. Yeah. I don't have to be told what to wear to work, and I can be comfortable, and my clients are more comfortable. I don't want to wear jeans. And, we can. And if I'm comfortable and authentic in my own skin, then my clients benefit from that. Yeah. And 100%. if I'm wearing something that is not really kind of suited for me or I feel weird in, then my clients are going to feel some weird energy off of me. So I think being able to be, no, we're not slovenly. I mean, we're just not that way. But if I just want to wear, you know, jeans with a hole in my knee and a sweatshirt today because that's just how I'm comfortable. I'm not, I'm not sloppy, but I'm just comfortable. My clients are going to, you know, they're going to feel that. And I'll be honest with you, people don't come in here caring about what we look like. No. They just want to get well. Right. No. I mean, we do look cute all the time. <laughs> but, that's that's not, a, but ultimately, they, <laughs> they just want to be well. They yeah, don't want to. Our personalities come through. Yeah. They don't want to. And we, they, I mean, and they do. Mm-hmm. It's just fun. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? Completely random topic, by the I way. Know. Oh, um, we were talking about the differentiation between coming from a place of responding versus a place of reacting. That has come up many times this week, and actually that comes up a lot, yeah. a lot more than we than we recognize. And so how do you conceptualize I'm the difference? If, and I'm wondering what your thoughts are around this. Like a place of reactivity to me comes from a bodily response where mm-hmm. a place of or a, I'm sorry, wait, hold on. A place of reacting comes from a body, something in the body, whereas right. a place of response comes from a place of being like, you know, rational, grounded, um, looking at options. So it's more, more head based, maybe. I agree with that. Do you? Because I feel like part of the reactivity is when we get really large in anger or we get really demanding or we make ourselves really small in a, you know, a victim martyr stance. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, and I think when we react is when our body gets activated. Yeah. Right. So if I'm, if I'm trying really hard to regulate my body because I can feel it getting activated and I'm breathing deep and breathing deep and it's not working, I'm more likely just to go, Oh my God, would you just stop? Yeah. Right, or something like that. That might be right. It's a very reacting is a very impulsive thing and it's a very visceral act Mm -hmm. where I think responding, like you said, is more thoughtful. But my body's calm when I'm responding, right? And if and 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 response and react can actually you can shift from one to the other. So if I'm responding in a thoughtful way to you and you're not give you're not hearing me and you're coming at me with a reacting kind of a thing, eventually my body's going to get activated and I'm going to go, oh my God, I can't do this. Right. You know, I'm not going to stay in, it's hard to stay in response. Right. One of the things that I love is Sherry Kepper's empowerment wheel, Uh where she taught, where she has it clearly diagrammed. She's basically taken the Stephen Cartman drama triangle and Mm -hmm. expanded it. And so she has it clearly delineated between a place when we're, coming from a place of reactivity versus a place of response and how to shift from a place of reactivity into a place of response. Yeah. And I I think understanding the difference and knowing that, because and I say this a lot too, just because someone asks you a question doesn't mean you have to give them an answer. Right. We aren't, we aren't obliged to answer things. So even something as simple as going on, (laughs) go ahead. Okay. What? Nothing. I'm waiting for you to talk. Okay. So even as something as simple as like going on a job interview, if I'm in a job interview and they ask me a question, I, I, I'm allowed to take a minute, thoughtfully think about the question, and give a thoughtful answer. I'm, a, I'm not allowed to take you know, five minutes of uncomfortable time to do it, but I don't have to just pop off an answer right. to satisfy somebody's question. I can sit and think about it, and I'm going to give a more thoughtful response, 
if I take a minute, put some thought into it, and come back. And even if we practice that in our everyday life, if we practice it in text messaging, yeah, and you know, and respond to a text instead of react to a text. Same with email. Uh -huh. I think that we we can we know the flavor enough to know when somebody is in that space. Yeah. So what were you laughing at? Oh, I was laughing because well, it came to mind because you and I always talk about you know how powerful no is right mm -hmm. and like there are times in our lives that um if we can't do something and we say no i can't do that um sometimes people are like oh, well why not <laughs> and then we feel obligated to give a response as to what i can't do it. i'm sorry i can't do that right now yeah that's a full sentence i asked this more this morning is so funny this very morning somebody that that we both know we love dearly one of our wind river people yeah and i were texting this morning and i asked a question wind of river. her oh and she's amazing she and i i asked her a question and her response to me was no and then it said and that is a complete sentence <laughs> yes. and i was like yes ma'am it is and i didn't i don't need a whole litany of stuff right you know behind it but, but it was I feel so like funny sometimes when people aren't used to ex, you know accepting that as a full sentence yeah. and then they're kind of like poking more and want justification as to why you know no and I know that we've done a ton of talks on you know how powerful the word no is and it's you know God given and everything um, but sometimes we get reactive when we keep getting poked yes which highlights what you which turned them into what you were just talking about yeah well, and, and a little sidebar too, when somebody tells you no, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. It doesn't, and they don't owe you an explanation, you know, and in our world it's funny because we kind of make jokes about it sometimes, but if, but you have to be ready to accept no if you ask a question. Right. That's just the way life works. Right. You can't expect a yes every time you ask something. Right. That's not fair. Right. So it's okay to give a no and just say, no, nah, I can't do that. Okay. No, we're not, you know, it's not going to work. I feel like response is more deliberate. Yes. Intentional. Honestly, in here, the way that it looks for us is that we have clients that are struggling with communication with their partners a lot. Mm -hmm. And their and what they're also struggling with is their body getting activated when their partner and them are trying to communicate. So part the 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 issue is, okay, let's try to regulate our body. Let's think about let's rehearse and role play. A thoughtful response when these situations come up or let's rehearse and role play ways that you can understand what's going on and differently so that you can respond in a way that makes right. sense instead of react in a way that causes more problems and so we talk a lot about how your body influences what's how you react to your partner but all of that to say sometimes we role play responses and so and I always say don't use my words because my words are my words and right. they're authentic to me but you know <laughs> if you use my words in, in your relationship you're gonna sound weird but the flavor of what we're role-playing is what we're looking at right and sometimes if you have a response ready and you've rehearsed that when this person gets activated and it comes at me then I know that it's this is the way that I'm supposed to respond it helps your body calm down right. because you're not like oh my god what do I do what do I do you already know what to do. Right. And it's interesting because in session we'll talk about, like, we'll highlight, oh, I'm seeing a lot of reactivity right now. Tell me what that's about. We, You know, versus I'm seeing a lot of response right now. <laughs> yeah, we don't, <laughs> we say, know that. That. We don't we like say that. We don't say that. When there's reactivity, we see it bodily. Yes. In session. And yes. so whether we're doing processing with EMDR, brain spotting, or you with ART, um, in the middle of couple session, one couple will, you know, one partner will be con conversing with us, and then I'll look over and I'll be no will notice, ooh, something just hit you. What happened? What it, what's that little bit of movement I just saw? Well, or and you see it with your kids when they roll their eyes, right? Oh my God, that's what's, a reaction, right? Like that's that a, oh my God, you are that the message that we receive from some people's nonverbal but physical reactivity mm -hmm. is that, that what, it's however we interpret what they're saying because they're not right. telling us we're interpreting it <laughs> and the, the downside to that is sometimes my kids roll their eyes at me and I don't care and then sometimes I've had a really rough day full of reactivity and, and full of, of, of negativity coming into my world that when my kids roll their eyes I just want to poke them out of their head <laughs> you know I mean you feel like you. oh my god why are you know, and then I get reactive so right. sometimes our ability to stay in our response brain is based on the amount of crud we've had going on 
in our lives and it sometimes it's just really hard so we can't we're not perfect right none of us can Absolutely stay in preach. thoughtful mindful conversation like that would be great but we can't expect that from each other because we can't give that to each other i mean there was only one buddha there was only one jesus <laughs> I mean, outside of them here we are yeah mm -hmm. so we can't we it, oh you just like completely ch chinked my brain a little bit so we talk about react so I, I stole this from trish murray she's beautiful and wonderful love clinician her. and she used this used this analogy and i just love her um but she, like you know the whole analogy of a soda bottle and you shake it up and then the lid pops off and soda goes everywhere and if you have all of this body reaction let's imagine that that's what that carbonation is right right and when you open the soda where do you point it like literally i open a soda where do i point it i point it away from me because i don't want to get it all over me when it starts to go so I end up getting soda all over the people around me. So if you look at your body as being activated all day long, and then when it explodes, it explodes on everybody around you, but I feel better. Right. And that's not fair to people, right? Right. So what we want to do is, is work on that body stuff, and throughout the day check in with our body and keep our body regulated. We are less reactive. And so and then I added on to Trisha's thing where I said, what happens if you shake a bottle of water? Nothing. Right. You can open it and it doesn't do anything. So what we're looking for is to be water, right? Right. But like you just said, there, there's only one Buddha. There's only one Jesus. We can't be water. Right. But we can work on it. Right. Right. And we can work on trying to maintain that and, and trying to get to that. So I think that that's a fair goal. So with, with that whole reactivity, if our body is calm, we're less reactive. So doing things throughout the day to calm our body, using the body, brain spotting music, using mindfulness, doing things, taking a time out and breathing, all those things that we tell people to do every day to keep their body calm creates less reactivity in our lives, which creates less problems. So I say something similar, however, it's not as beautiful of an analogy in my office. I say, listen, 10 pounds of shit's gonna come out of a two pound bag. How do you want it to come out? <laughs> there you go. There you go. I have more words today. <laughs> pounds of shit will come out of a two pound bag how do you want it to come out exactly it yeah. will it will it will be pretty mm -hmm. so we have we have to maintain some of this body stuff so when we talk about that it, it, that really is about not just our own sense of just like trying to keep our body okay and trying to keep ourselves safe but it's also our ability to communicate and to be in community with other people because yeah. if our body is constantly activated we are not going to be productive for anybody and one of the things, too, that I love about our relationship and our relationship with Allie and Kimberly and just in this office is that we're so attuned with each other. And so when our, we could feel the energy off of the other one, then we can feel like the dysregulation when it happens because we're human. And so we just take, close the door. We'll take a couple minutes. We'll be like, okay, how, mm -hmm, what's coming up for you right now? What am I feeling? <laughs> I know sometimes I'll walk in or, or Stephanie will walk in and we'll both be like, kind of like, ooh, hey, whoa, what's, what's happening? happening? Your energy's <laughs> off. And then we look at each I'm fine. Oh, okay, what well, you're not. So yeah. let's talk about that. So let's take it a little bit deeper. Let, let's just sidestep the fineness. What's happening? Yeah, because I'm fine is never really fine. No. Never. Which is one of the things that I loved about when I worked at the Naval Hospital. The, um, oh God, what is it? What are they called? When uh, the Admiral would come by and he would ask everybody, he'd be like, how are you doing? And then he'd be like, how are you really doing? Because <laughs> he knew that that first answer was just all appeasement. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. It's always the second, the real answer that comes in. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and when our body's dysregulated, we are putting off an energy. So other people feel it. And I think that, that people are people pick up on that, and then that, that influences communication, right? Right. So all of that goes into reactive as opposed to being mindfully responsive to something. Absolutely. And just because we come from a place of reactivity doesn't mean that we can't make amends and come from a place of response later. Right. We, can, we are always presented with an opportunity to do different I, I think so, and I think part of it, it, I think there's, when we are reactive, and, and we all do it, we all pop Absolutely. off, and then we're not human, right? Right. So when we get reactive, I think a relationship, a relationship, a true relationship requires that I have the ability to come to you and offer something different and, and offer amends making for being reactive, and, and, and if you want an explanation, you'll get it. If not, it's just an amends. And I think that the other part of the relationship is me being willing to hear that and, and give you grace for being human. Right. And then we can move on from it. And there's no, it's not forgive and forget, but it's grace. Right. right? Because we also know that there are going to be times when you're going to do that to me. Right. And you're going to jump to conclusions or you're going to be reactive to me. And so as long as there's that reciprocity 
of authenticity that we're allowed, then I think that um, that sounded smart, didn't it? It was smart. That did sound smart. So as long as we're allowed and afforded that opportunity, um, I think that that's what relationships are based on, not being perfect. Right. Not being perfect. No, you're not. So we don't have Allie here to tell us how to find us. No. All right, right she would can say, do, okay, what would she say? She would say flyleaf.com. Instagram is flyleaf underscore counseling. On YouTube, in the search bar, type in flyleaf counseling. Um, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. It's how you're watching us right now. Facebook. And then the Facebook. So we will not be here next week. We will not. This I am is gonna our be, last one of the year. I'm going to be the only one working next week. Yeah. So that's okay. Maybe you'll get some special one-on-one -on -one with me next week. Depending on how I feel. I don't know. I don't but, know. And if you know. not, we will start the new year kicking. Yeah. So if we miss you next week, have a very, very happy holidays. And have a wonderful new year. Mm -hmm. And if we don't see you next week, then we'll see you in 2023. Yes.